In 2021, one of Mexico's most respected journalists caught the attention of El Mencho, the country's deadliest drug kingpin. Unfortunately, nothing good ever comes from making El Mencho look your way, and she was about to find that out in the worst way possible. The Terror of Jalisco the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, CJNG, is arguably Mexico's most notorious criminal organization. Known for its aggressive methods and drug trafficking activities, the cartel has been involved in a lot of confrontations with their rivals in the Mexican government. And at its helm is a psychopathic madman called Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes, better known by his alias El Mencho. However, rival cartels and security forces are not the only ones that get to be at the receiving end of the CJNG's infamous brutality. On August August 4, 2021, Millennial TV journalist Azucena Uresti gave a report on Radio Formula concerning the turf war between the Jalisco New Generation Cartel and local militias in the Tierra Caliente region of Michoacan State. During the report, she interviewed a member of one of the so-called self-defense groups that are trying to keep the CJ Yang out of the region. Apparently, her interview greatly angered the CJ Yang and its top man, El Mencho. Following the broadcast, the cartel released a video directly threatening Uresti. The blurry video depicted several masked men armed with semi-automatic rifles. One of the masked men read aloud a message which he said was from El Mencho. I will make you eat your words, even if they accuse us of femicide because you don't know the truth and you only go by what you are told. We will find you wherever you are. The video went viral and sent shivers through the nation. In Mexico, threats against journalists are not empty talks. Reporters Without Borders claims Mexico ranks among the deadliest nations in the world for journalists. Organized crime, corruption, and impunity taken together produce a hostile atmosphere whereby journalists are always threatened, attacked, and even killed for their work. The Committee to Protect Journalists, CPJ, has recorded many instances whereby journalists covering crime and corruption suffer grave consequences. For revealing the truth about the strong criminal organizations and corrupt authorities of Mexico, journalists there have been kidnapped, tortured, and killed. In March 2017, Cecilio Pineda Birto made a broadcast about alleged corruption, and hours later he was found dead in a car wash. So when the threat was made by CJ Ng, many people believed it would only be a matter of time before Uresti would face a similar fate. Azucina, Uresti is known for her in-depth coverage of the nation's continuing drug war and investigative reporting. Her reputation for honest reporting, often on subjects other reporters might avoid because of the associated risks, has grown. Her work on Millennial TV and her speeches on Radio Formula have often addressed the violent actions of cartels, the situation facing self-defense groups, and the effect of the drug war on Mexican society. She has done several well-publicized interviews and pieces highlighting the operations of the CJNG and the challenges of self-defense militias in the weeks preceding the threat. These groups, often made of local residents, have taken up weapons to guard their communities against the cartel violence and extortion. After the video was released, the international community, human rights organizations, and other reporters showered support on Uresti and called on the Mexican government to provide protection for one of its most courageous citizens. Responding to the threat, President Andres Manuel López Obrador denounced the dangers and reaffirmed its will to safeguard press freedom. I reiterate my solidarity with this journalist, Azucena Uresti, and to all journalists, with the guarantee that our government will always protect those who carry out this job. Critics counter that the reaction of the government has been inadequate. According to CPJ, two journalists had been killed in 2021 prior to the threats, and nearly 60 had been murdered since 1994 for their work in Mexico. Many crimes against reporters go unpacked and the offenders are rarely held responsible, which fuels vulnerability and terror inside the media community. Nonetheless, Uresti said she would not back down from her professional responsibilities despite the threat, thanking the authorities and colleagues for their support. The dangers surely had a significant influence on her, and it is impossible to overestimate the psychological effects of being singled out by one of the most violent criminal groups. Fortunately, Uresti has not been harmed and is continued her work. However, the 2021 fiasco painted a sobering picture of the terrors that not only journalists but all of Mexico face daily at the hands of the cartels. The Jalisco New Generation Cartel has often been referred to in the media as the four-lettered cartel. It almost seems like an unconscious mimicry of the Catholics' instinct to cross themselves at the sight of evil. Don't speak of the devil and you won't see him, right? Wrong. Using both public demonstrations and acts of violence to convey unambiguous messages to the government
government and rival groups, the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, CJANG, has frequently shown its might and influence in Mexico. These acts show the boldness of the cartel despite continuous conflict with their host of enemies and their defiance in the face of the government. On July 17, 2020, the CJANG posted a video that was practically a boast of their military might. The video showed several cartel members wearing military fatigues and toting rifles while standing next to a long line of military tanks and armored cars. The release of the video coincided with El Mencho's birthday, and the video sparked discussions on how the cartel was able to purchase such high-grade military equipment. It was in all respect a clear and provocative statement to the Mexican government, indicating the CJANG had the tools and personnel to face state forces. In fact, just a month prior, the cartel had taken a brazen shot at the Mexican government. On June 28, 2020, Mexico City Police Chief Omar Garcia Harfuk was driving to work around 6.30 a.m. through the upscale Lomas de Chapultepec neighborhood when he was ambushed by heavily armed gunmen who had disguised themselves as road workers. Mexico City was previously a forbidden area for cartels. Yet on that dewy morning, CJ Yang assassins opened fire on Harfuk's vehicle and riddled it with bullets. However, their goal eluded them as Harfuk only suffered injuries and was rushed to the hospital where he made full recovery. Unfortunately, two of his bodyguards and a passerby were killed in the assassination attempt. The last time the Mexican capital had witnessed such an assault was in 1971, 50 years ago. Two years later, the CJ Yang once more made news with a gruesome episode in Veracruz. The cartel left nine dead and hung them from a bridge in Poza Rica in January 2022. Along with the bodies was a banner that read in part, lovely people, carry on with your routines, be a patriot, kill a Viagra. The Viagras are the rivals to the CJ Yang in Poza Rica, and the dead were members of the cartel. Veracruz has long been a battlefield for several criminal groups fighting for dominance over rich drug trafficking routes and other illicit industries. Public displays of violence like the Veracruz hangings are part and parcel methods in the CJ Yang's overall strategy to spread terror and establish its authority over disputed areas. The hangings were not the first time El Mencho had plunged the city of Veracruz into mourning. On the 20th of September, 2011, two trucks dumped 35 bodies, 23 men and 12 women, on the main road in Veracruz in the middle of rush hour. The perpetrators were the Los Matazetas, or the Zeta Killers, as the Jalisco New Generation Cartel was called then. The Matazetas claimed to be saviors, who were trying to uproot the violent Los Zetas cartel, but the years have seen them grow to fill the Los Zetas barbaric shoes. We would be talking about this later in the video, so stay with us. There are several reasons why the public displays of violence are used by the Chilisco New Generation Cartel. Firstly, it seeks to scare rivals and discourage challenges to its power. The cartel wants to discourage other organizations from invading its territory or interfering with its operations by showing a ready use of extreme violence. Second, these acts expose to the government the power of the cartel and its will to confront security forces if necessary. Frequently questioning the activities of the CJANG, the Mexican government has sought to offset the cartel's influence. Notable operations aimed at capturing or killing powerful cartel leaders have been executed over the years, and millions have been dedicated to destroying the organization's foundation. Still, the CJANG is a stubborn thorn that has refused to be pulled out. Government efforts to tackle the terror of Jalisco have greatly diminished since President Obrador was elected. The the president's strategy of non-violence in the face of the cartel's threat has caused the violence of the CJNG and other cartels to worsen. In addition, corruption within political structures and law enforcement have hampered the fight against drugs. Perhaps the worst factor of all is that El Mencho's terror tactics are actually working. Law enforcement agents are known to shrink at the mention of his name and prefer to accept the bribes rather than contend with him. The video released in 2020 and the Veracruz killings are among a myriad of activities that the Jalisco New Generation Cartel has used to demonstrate the brutality and power in recent years. Although violence has been the primary tool of cartels past and present, the CJANG has taken the savagery to a whole new level. Their mystique is only increased by the fact that it took them only five years to grow from Los Matazetas, an offshoot of the defunct Milenio Cartel, to being able to challenge El Chapo's Sinaloa Cartel. So how did the CJANG grow into a criminal organization that has been compared to ISIS? the brutal rise of El Mencho.
the Matazetas would win the power struggle in Millennio Cartel and become Xi Jinping. The senseless violence of the Chiang would be easier to understand when you understand the group. When security forces doubled down on the Millennio Cartel and got rid of its leaders, the cartel began to tear at the seams. An internal war broke out between a faction that wanted El Mencho as the clan's top man and La Resistencia, the faction that wanted El Pidio Mojaro Ramirez, El Pilo, to become the new cartel boss. El Pilo had been a close associate of both El Lobo and El Tigre before their arrests, and his faction accused El Mencho's side, Los Torcidos, of handing over El Lobo to the authorities. The Millennio Cartel's base, Guadalajara, is home to a thriving pharmaceutical industry that makes it easy to produce cheap drugs like methamphetamine. Its fertile lands grow marijuana and poppy, and the port on the coast allows boats from Asia to pour in with precursor drugs that enable the production of synthetic drugs like fentanyl to be produced. The Mata Zetas initially presented to the public as extermination agents of the people and for the people. They launched propaganda against La Resistencia, claiming to be against the extortions done by rival cartels. It is also the reason they took the name Zeta Killers, despite being called Los Torcidos by La Resistencia. The Los Zetas, which began as an elite assassin squad in the Tijuana cartel made up of former military and vigilantes, were particularly aggressive during the period, and the Mata Zetas profited in public appeal by claiming their goal was to eradicate the group. They announced their arrival on the cartel scene with the kidnapping and torture of three Los Zetas members, whose body was later found inside an abandoned truck in Cancun, Quintana Roo. The murders were followed by the Veracruz killings in September 2011, where 35 bodies were dumped in the middle of the highway around 5.30 p.m., and a message was left beside the bodies. People of Veracruz, do not allow yourselves to be extorted. Do not pay for protection. If you do, is because you want to. This is the only thing these people, Los Zetas, can do. This is going to happen to all the Zetas who continue to operate in Veracruz. This territory has a new proprietor. Los Matazetas eventually won the war against La Resistencia and after securing its position in western Mexico, changed its name to Jalisco New Generation Cartel. Since its emergence, the group has committed the most atrocious acts and executed violence in a way never seen before. However, the senseless violence of the Chiang would be easier to understand when you understand the group is merely an extension of the man at the top. The cold-hearted El Mencho, Nemesio Oseguera, El Mencho Cervantes, is among the most enigmatic and feared figures in the cartel scene. Driven, aggressive, and incredibly skilled in negotiating Mexico's cartel territory, his journey from a small farm child to the cruel commander of the Jalisco New Generation cartel, CJ Yang, is one of legends. El Mencho was born into a poor agricultural family in the little hamlet of Cuatitlan, in the state of Mihuacan, Mexico. He dropped out of school and worked as a guard on a marijuana farm as a teenager. With poverty at his doorstep, the boy desired more and had relentless drive. Unfortunately, he took the path he saw open to him, crime. Seeking a better life, he came to the United States in his youth, only to be deported back to Mexico after a heroin trafficking arrest in California. Back in Mexico, El Mencho joined the Millennio Cartel, a criminal group running drug trafficking and other illicit operations. Here he began his ascent as an assassin, or Sicario. Right away he was different from others with his ruthless demeanor, strategic thinking, and ability for command of allegiance. El Mencho's ascent was cemented by the internal conflict that birthed Los Matazetas. On the 28th of October 2009, the leader of the Millennio Cartel, Oscar Orlando Nava Valencia El Lobo, was arrested. El Mencho had served as a Sicario in a unit tasked with protecting him and had married a daughter of the Valencia clan. The following year in May, Valencia's brother Juan Carlos El Tigre was also arrested and a few months later, another leader of the cartel, Ignacio Nacho Coronel Villarreal, was killed in a shootout with the Mexican army. The Millennio cartel never recovered from the split and out of its ashes came the Sijang like a phoenix, albeit a bloodthirsty one. Under El Mencho, the Sijang grew rapidly in scope and activity. There was nothing new about its methods methods, military-style tactics, modern equipment use, and strategic approach to both its commercial operations and armed conflicts have been used by cartels since thy kingdom come. What set the CJang apart was its sheer violence and brutality. Rivals, government officials, and civilians all included their four-course meal on caveman-like savagery. In 2013, CJang members raped, killed, and set fire to a 10-year-old girl whom they mistook for a rival's daughter. Two years later, CJNG assassins executed 
executed a man and his elementary school age son by detonating sticks of dynamite duct taped to their bodies, laughing as they filmed the ghastly scene with their phones. Whilst the CGN tosses around the corpses of the innocent around the country, the man who empowers them remains safely hidden. Few people, even within his cartel, know what he looks like. Abandoning the extravagant lifestyles of his contemporaries like El Chapo, El Mencho lives a modest lifestyle and prefers to work from the shadows. In the words of a former DEA agent, in Mexico, you'd run into guys who had met Chapo, but not Mencho. He's kind of a ghost. El Mencho has a bounty of $10 million and MXN $30 million from the US and Mexico, respectively, yet he has not been captured. Reports of his location are usually contradictory, and rare encounters contribute to his infamy. Despite his elusiveness, though, one thing is known about El Mencho, which is his love for cockfighting. It is rumored that once lost $100,000 in a cockfight. His love for cockfighting has gotten him the nickname Lord of the Roosters. Estimates set El Mencho's wealth at $1 billion, and he has around 5,000 soldiers at the ready. The cartel's CJ and NG operations go well beyond drug trafficking. Among the various crimes they do include extortion, kidnapping, and weaponry trafficking. As long as El Mencho remains free, the CJ poses a serious threat to stability and security not just in Mexico, but also in regions touched by their extensive criminal network. They have fought more rivals on their way to the top and continue to fight at the top to secure their territories. A trail of blood and gun trail. The CJNG began as the Zeta killers who vowed to eliminate the Los Zetas cartel and became one of the latter's biggest rivals. However, in getting rid of the enemy, they became the enemy and continued the callous violence that became Los Zetas' legacy. Driven by a pattern of back-and-forth killings and reprisals, this conflict has left a path of carnage over Mexico. Both groups have battled for control of profitable drug trafficking routes and places, which has led to a continuous cycle of carnage, and the end is not in sight. In 2011, between the 20 20th of September and the 9th of October, the state of Veracruz reported 100 killings. All the victims had been murdered in just 18 days. The killings include the 35 bodies dumped by the Mata Zetas, through which they declared a turf war with the Zetas. On the 23rd of November, several abandoned vehicles were found in Culiac and Sinaloa with bodies inside them. 23 bodies were found in total, and 16 had been burned to death. The culprit was Los Zetas, who were retaliating for the Veracruz massacres. Besides the Los Zetas, the CJNG has also battled the Knights Templar for territory. On the 21st of March 2012, the four-lettered cartel released a video declaring war on the Knights Templar. Local militias in Mikoacan allied with the CJNG in the turf war, and by the 21st of April of the same year, the Matazetas had murdered 21 people. In the same vein, the Matazetas have a long-time feud with the Sinaloa cartel. However, unlike with Los Zetas and Knights Templars, the Sinaloa cartel was once an ally. During the 2000s, the Millennial cartel worked for the Sinaloa cartel as an enforcer in the Jalisco region, and after the Matazetas broke away from the cartel, they continued the alliance. Los Zetas was a morbid enemy of the Sinaloa cartel, and by taking care of them, the Matazetas helped the Sinaloa cartel get rid of a regional enemy. But the Matazetas, or CJ Yang as they would soon be, turned on their former employers, and they made it known with a glaring display of defiance. In August 2016, the CJ Yang kidnapped two sons of Joaquin Guzman El Chapo Loera, Jesus Alfredo Guzman Salazar and Ivan Archivaldo Guzman Salazar, along with friends. Jesus and his entourage had gone to an upscale restaurant, La Leche, to celebrate his birthday when CJ Yang operatives arrived and abducted them at gunpoint. The incident occurred shortly after El Chapo was incarcerated and was seen as a humiliation for the powerful Sinaloa cartel. Although the boys were later released after negotiations, the message was clear. There is a new boss in town. The CJNG has since grown to become the Sinaloa cartel's most most powerful enemy. Their rivalry extends across states and entire regions have been engulfed in it. Despite this, it is not the Sinaloa cartel that gave El Mencho his biggest headache. The Nueva Plaza cartel was an offshoot of the CJNG, and at a time threatened to tear the cartel apart like several juggernauts before it that could not survive the infightings and imploded. In 2018, a CJNG financier named El Colombiano whispered some information about Carlos Enrique El Cholo Sanchez Martinez, and when El Cholo discovered it, he murdered El Colombiano. 
Colombiano. Enraged, El Mencho accused El Cholo of treason and tried to assassinate him. The coup failed, and in response, El Cholo parted with the cartel and founded Nueva Plaza with El Tiburon and L85. All three were high-ranking members of the cartel. El Cholo would murder the leader of the assassin squad that tried to kill him and masterminded the American consulate bombing in 2018. On the 18th of March, 2021, his body was discovered stabbed and wrapped in plastic on a park bench. He had been captured by the CJ Ang and tortured, with a video of him released on the day his body was found. Afterwards, the leaders of the Nueva Plaza cartel were either arrested or killed, and with them gone, El Mencho had effectively gotten rid of a rival cartel as the Nueva Plaza slowly spiraled out of existence. Los Zetas maintained an iron grip on their territories and were not afraid to use extreme violence to get what they wanted. The CJ Ang emerged as an antidote to the poison, but unfortunately has shed just as much blood as the Los Zetas and every other cartel they have battled. The violence and instability ensuing from their rivalries and territorial conflicts have caused enormous misery for countless communities. The actions of the CJNG will most likely linger across Mexico and beyond as it continues to fight for control over vital locations and confronts its various adversaries. The Jalisco New Generation Cartel, CJNG, has established itself among Mexico's most powerful and feared criminal groupings. This reputation stems from a slew of well-publicized, violent events that have established their terrible record in the annals of Mexican organized crime. The 2015 San Del Oeste murders are among the most well-known events linked with the CJNE. This event startled the country and underlined the savagery of the cartel. Calculatively, CJNG agents ambushed and killed a group of San Del Oeste, Jalisco police officers. The attack was a direct challenge to the authority of the Mexican government as much as a display of might. Ambush confirmed the CJ Yang's capacity for highly coordinated and fatal operations, hence strengthening their reputation for great savagery. Another set of bloody events highlighting the aggressive strategies of the CJ Yang are the Jalisco attacks, targeting both law enforcement and competing cartels. These strikes have left a path of devastation all around. 2015 saw one of the most notorious of these strikes when the CJ Yang shot down a military helicopter using a rocket-propelled grenade, killing numerous troops. This overt act of violence served as a sobering reminder of the military-grade capability of the cartel and its readiness to challenge state forces squarely. Such events have not only scared the local population, but also taxed law enforcement resources, seeking to counteract the impact of the cartel. The kidnapping of El Chapo's boys is maybe one of the most spectacular events in CJ Yang's annals. The sons of infamous Sinaloa cartel boss Joaquin El Chapo Jesus Alfredo and Ivan Archivaldo Guzman were kidnapped in 2016. Under a sophisticated and audacious operation, the kidnappings happened in a high-end restaurant in Puerto Vallarta, Jalisco. This action was a clear warning to the Sinaloa cartel, indicating the CJNG's readiness to actively oppose one of the most strong criminal groups worldwide. Tensions between the two cartels were raised by the abductions, which resulted in a sequence of bloody reprisals and even more destabilizing of the area. These well-publicized events are only a handful of the CJNG's larger plan of utilizing aggressive methods and great brutality to keep and increase their authority. For both competing cartels and law enforcement authorities, the cartel's readiness to participate in high-risk activities and their capacity to carry them out precisely have made them a great threat. Rising to prominence as public enemy number one, the CJ Yang's strategic ruthlessness and operational effectiveness are evidence of their acts have had far-reaching effects on the dynamics of organized crime in Mexico, as well as on the immediate violence and anarchy they create. Maintaining a grip of dread and control over vast areas of territory by constantly opposing governmental authority and competing cartels, the CJ Yang has guaranteed their position as among the most feared criminal groups in the nation. All in all, the terrible reputation of the CJ Yang is based on a foundation of high-profile, violent events, including the 2015 San Del Oeste massacres, the Jalisco attacks, and the kidnapping of El Chapo's sons. These acts have not only confirmed their dominance in the criminal underworld, but also underline the continuous difficulties Mexican authorities confront in their fight against organized crime. Amidst those, a severe and growing fentanyl epidemic besetting the United States is being battled, with many lives lost to overdoses and devastated communities resulting from addiction. The Jalisco New Generation Cartel, CJNG, which now mostly supplies fentanyl and other synthetic opioids to the U.S. market, is important in
in this. The CJNG significantly and in many different ways fuels the fentanyl crisis. They have set up advanced manufacturing plants in Mexico where they synthesize fentanyl from precursor molecules usually imported from China. Because fentanyl is significantly more strong than heroin and other opioids, overdose and death risk is higher. Hence, the CJNG's involvement in their distribution is especially deadly. Using a network of complex drug pathways, the CJNG moves fentanyl and other drugs into the United States. Reflecting the cartel's broad influence and logistical capacity, these paths run through land, sea, and air. They sneak drugs across the border via tunnels, secret compartments in cars, and even drones, among other techniques. The creative smuggling methods used by the gang have made it challenging for U.S. officials to stop their shipments, allowing enormous amounts of fentanyl to get to American towns and cities. A degree of militarism in the C.J. Yang's activities distinguishes them from many other criminal groups. Usually by illegal means, they have obtained military-grade weapons and equipment. They protect their territory and fight police enforcement with this armament, which comprises high-powered weapons, grenades, even rocket launchers. Their strategies, which include coordinated attacks, ambushes, and advanced monitoring operations, have a similarly militaristic character. The CJNG can hide the sources of their riches and project a veneer of legitimacy by including their activities into the official economy, therefore complicating efforts to follow and destroy their financial networks. The aspirations of the CJ Yang transcend Mexico and the United States. Seeking to increase their impact and activities abroad, they have developed ties in nations all throughout Latin America, as well as far into Europe and Asia. Their worldwide network helps them to expand their activities and enter new markets, therefore rendering them not only a regional, but a global menace. The CJNG's participation in the fentanyl epidemic is a prime example of the multifarious and international character of contemporary drug trafficking. Their capacity to generate and distribute fentanyl on a big scale, together with their use of advanced smuggling methods and military strategies, have made them a major actor in the continuing opioid crisis raging in the United States. Their growth outside Mexico and the United States and their employment of respectable companies to hide their activities further show their flexibility and resilience. Fighting the CJNG and stopping fentanyl imports into the United States calls for a coordinated, multifarious strategy that addresses not just the supply chains, but also the more general economic and social networks supporting their activities. Found this information exciting and unbelievable? Be sure to check out other similar and amazing videos on the screen. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video.